Welcome to this Easy 11 Plus short lesson on editing adjectives. If you find this video useful, please remember to subscribe to this channel. You can unsubscribe at any time. And don't forget to take a look at the free resources linked in the video description. Let's get started. The exercise we're going to be looking at today is taken from part of a chapter of RSL Creative Writing Book 2 which you can find on Amazon and on my website. The introduction here is in the worksheet and you can download and print the worksheet in the video description. So I'm gonna skip past this right now and get straight onto the exercise itself. As you can see in these instructions, we need to find the adjectives that aren't strictly necessary and cross them out. Now, the reason this is important is that lots of people when they're learning to write creatively include far too many descriptive adjectives and they actually end up cluttering the writing and making it harder to read and less enjoyable. And so what we're going to try and do is get rid of the unnecessary adjectives so that the ones that really count can do their job even more effectively. As we go through, we're going to find each adjective and consider whether or not it's performing a useful function, whether or not the text is better with it left in or taken out. So first of all, we've got the word enormous. If you read the sentence, you can see that this spaceship is also described as colossal. So we don't need both of those things. Colossal is probably a more interesting word, so let's get rid of enormous. Let's read the sentence as we have it before we consider any more. The lumbering ship eased itself into calm orbit, bright sunlight flashing from curved hull panels as its colossal bulk twisted then settled into steady, perfect alignment. So still quite a few adjectives there. The lumbering ship. So lumbering is rather on the in the hinterland between a verb and an adjective here. Let's think about it as an adjective. So this ship is lumbering. Now, the movement of the ship is also described later in this sentence. Its colossal bulk twisted, then settled into steady, perfect alignment. So we get a pretty clear view of the ship's movement from that. And we can reach our own conclusion about whether something that has colossal bulk that twists itself then settled is lumbering or not. We'll produce our own mental image. I think that the word lumbering, while it certainly is doing a job, I don't think it's doing an essential one. And I think that the beginning, the ship eased itself into calm orbit, is an effective and clear opening, uncluttered by too many adjectives. What about calm? Well, without that word, it could be a dangerous, frantic orbit under fire with space junk flying around. So I think calm tells us something useful and helps to give atmosphere to this text. So I'm going to leave that there. Bright sunlight flashing from curved hull panels. Well, if the sunlight is flashing, it must be bright. And so bright is quite an easy one to eliminate. Sunlight flashing from curved hull panels. If we don't know that they're curved, then they might not be. And I think the word curved helps us to give an image of what kind of shape the ship has. So for me, that's a useful adjective that helps to create a clearer and more vivid mental image. As it's colossal bulk, well, colossal is I think not strictly necessary because a lot of the same information is communicated by bulk. If you talk about the bulk of a spaceship, we already have an idea that it's large. However, colossal does modify that. It shows that it's not just large, but very large. And so I think I'm gonna leave it in. Twisted, then settled into steady, perfect alignment. If it's in alignment, that's really what we need to know. And if that alignment is steady, then that's very close to saying that it's perfect. So I think the perfect, while it isn't completely useless, it doesn't really add much to our understanding of what's happening. You could say the same about steady, then settled into steady alignment. If it's in alignment, it's in alignment, but then the word steady helps to communicate that it's going to stay there. So I think the sentence is fine as it is. The ship eased itself into calm orbit, sunlight flashing from curved hull panels as its colossal bulk twisted, then settled into steady alignment. Of course, we don't need the comma after steady anymore now that we got rid of perfect. One thing you'll have picked up from this is that it isn't really a matter of right and wrong. If I got rid of steady and left perfect instead, that would be a different preference, also valid. I could have left colossal in or taken it out. I could have left lumbering in or taken it out. And I've made different choices in these places depending on my own preferences. It's a thought process that you need to get used to. It isn't necessarily about coming up with exactly the same answer as me. The important thing is that you're thinking about adjectives in this way recognizing that unless they're doing something really useful, they probably shouldn't be there. Let's carry on. Beneath it, the awesome planet rolled, impossibly vast, specked with the dark, mysterious craters of tremendous asteroid impacts. Okay, this is very heavy on adjectives. Now, when you've got a word like awesome, it's a little bit like those places in the story where you describe a character as evil or say that something is terrifying. These are words that tell the reader what emotion to feel. In this case, that they should find this planet awesome. 
And in my opinion, this is rarely a good thing to do, because if you've described the planet well, then the reader will find it awesome by themselves. And then they're much more likely to really believe that emotion. So this is just the kind of thing that I would encourage you to remove. And if when you've removed it, there isn't an impression of awesomeness anymore, then you probably need to do a better work describing the thing that you're talking about. Beneath it, the planet rolled, impossibly vast, specked with the dark, mysterious craters of tremendous asteroid impacts. Now, what about impossibly vast? The adjective here is vast, of course. Um, impossibly is an adverb. Let's think about it anyway. So this planet being vast, I think, matters, because otherwise we might visualize it as looking relatively small and far away. Impossibly really adds to our impression of that, because it suggests that this is something that would be hard for a person to believe, even seeing, them, seeing it in front of them. It's that enormous. And I think these words help us to imagine that. Specked with the dark, mysterious craters of tremendous asteroid impacts. It doesn't really convince me to say that these are mysterious and then say exactly what's caused them, which suggests that they aren't really that mysterious at all. I think mysterious here, it's a word that's trying to create some atmosphere, but it doesn't quite do the job. What about dark, specked with the dark craters? Well, if they aren't dark, maybe they're fiery, maybe they're full of streetlights. So I think dark helps us to imagine them. The planets there and there are these dark marks all across it. Specked with the dark craters of tremendous asteroid impacts. Now, when it comes to tremendous, it's hard to say that this isn't doing anything because, you know, otherwise they might be light asteroid impacts. Then again, if you can see these craters from orbit around the planet, the impacts must have been pretty tremendous. And also we already have a lot of descriptive language in this sentence. If I read it as it is now, you can see it's still quite on the verge of being overloaded with descriptive words. Beneath it, the planet rolled impossibly vast, specked with the dark craters of tremendous asteroid impacts. You've also got this pattern of dark craters, tremendous impacts. It's a little bit repetitive with this adjective noun structure. So I think it makes sense to get rid of tremendous, even though it isn't a completely useless word here. Tight little gas clouds scudded across its ruddy surface. Okay, well, tight little. If they are little, they aren't necessarily tight. They might be little, but also a bit vague and fluffy. But if they're tight, they must be little. So while the meaning of little doesn't include the meaning tight, the meaning tight does include the meaning little, if that makes sense. So if we leave tight in, we don't need little. This is a bit like the decision we had about bright sunlight flashing. If the sunlight's flashing, it's almost certainly also bright, so we can get rid of bright. But if we left bright in, we wouldn't know that it was flashing. And so flashing is the better word to leave in. Of course, this is about removing adjectives. So flashing being a verb shouldn't really be in our firing line anyway. But as you can see, I'm approaching this exercise in a fairly loose way. I can do that. It's from my book. I can do what I want with it. Um, tight gas clouds scudded across its ruddy surface. Do we need ruddy? Well, without it, we don't have any idea what colour this planet is. Whereas with ruddy, we know that it's a red colour. But also, I really like the sound of scudded across its ruddy surface, this ud sound, which is kind of like the da -da 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 -da, something scudding along quickly. Um, so I think it'd be a great shame to lose that. And between them, roamed menacing thousand meter spaceships reduced to the scale of insignificant mosquitoes. So we've got a lot of adjectives here again. It's obvious overload. What can we most effectively remove? And between them, roamed menacing thousand meter spaceships. Let's pick one of those. So if we say menacing spaceships reduced to the scale of insignificant mosquitoes, we know that they appear small, but we don't know how large they were in the first place. Also, menacing is one of these words a little bit like awesome. One of these words that tells the reader what emotion to feel. It has its place, but I'd rather leave it out. Let the reader see them as being thousand meter spaceships roaming and the verb to roam makes them seem like some kind of beast, which is in its way quite menacing, and let them find it menacing for themselves if they want to. Reduced to the scale of insignificant mosquitoes. If the scale makes them seem like mosquitoes, it's obvious that they appear insignificant. That's the whole point of the image. So the adjective insignificant really doesn't do anything useful here. Let's read through this quickly and see what we've got. The ship eased itself into calm orbit, sunlight flashing from curved hull panels as its colossal bulk twisted then settled into steady alignment. Beneath it the planet rolled, impossibly vast, specked with the dark craters of asteroid impacts. Tight gas clouds scudded across its ruddy surface, and between them roamed thousand metre spaceships, reduced to the scale of mosquitoes. So you can see that we've removed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 
words from this, 10 adjectives, yet it's still very descriptive and it flows nicely without seeming overloaded with descriptive words. And that's what you're aiming for. I hope that was useful. If it was, please remember to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to check out the free resources linked in the video description. I'll see you next Tuesday evening at six o'clock for my next live lesson. Bye-bye.